Welcome to Mobile Meals from Thor Motor Coach. I am Steve DeVal along with Tom Shaw. This is exciting to be in yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, how exciting is this? This is really cool. So here's what this is all about, all right? Mobile Meals is some great recipes and it's a great way for you to utilize the tools that come with your Thor Motor Coach, such as your convection microwave, your electric induction cooktop. A lot of times you may think, well, I'm only limited to this and this, but these convection microwaves are unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do. It's basically having uh, a full-size mm -hmm. oven like you have in, in a regular house. And so right now it is preheating for our first recipe, which is going to be beer roasted turkey breast. So we're gonna bring you that today. We're also going to make garlic butter Parmesan mashed potatoes and for dessert, crisp mint pie. And this is all stuff that's easy to do. Appliances and, and, and whatnot that you have in your motor home. So we're gonna get things rolling. Are you ready? I am super ready. All right, cause we're, we're hungry, we're ready for lunch. So first up, we are going to make our beer roasted turkey breast. So in the fridge here, we're gonna grab our turkey breast. We are going to grab our, yes, beer, because it is beer roasted, right? And we're also going to need our garlic and our rosemary and our thyme. So first thing you wanna do, if you'd like to hand me a scissors and a knife right behind you there All for right. a knife rack. What we found works best are these boneless turkey breasts because they're easy. You can pick them up frozen. Uh, it takes a couple of days in the fridge to thaw them out. Yeah, I think we picked this up uh, just about four days ago and had, yeah. had it thawing up. So, uh, hand, me a, hand me a knife if you would please, Tom. And they're real easy to work with once you thaw it and there's no bones and you know, you really, really don't have the cleanup that uh, you would. You know what I just did is I cut through that gravy package, which you're not going to need. Uh, I don't, you, you can use the gravy package if you want, but the way that this is seasoned with the, with the beer and the herbs, you don't really need it. They always put these nets on there. It's like Spider-Man caught these turkeys or something, <laughs> which I don't, unless he's fighting new criminals, turkey man. Uh, cut out, cut out the net, all right. And then, oh gosh, you gotta love these things. Oh, Sometimes yeah. I do this and it flings out and then I get turkey juice in my eye. And it's really kind of gross. And if you've never had turkey juice in your eye, it's not something you want. I'll tell you what, I'll trade you there. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set this down. I'm going to uh, wash my hands real quick because uh, it's raw turkey juice, and you, you don't really want that on you. All right. Kind of the uh, the fun for the background on this, uh, you know, Steve and I yeah. are not professional chefs. I mean, we're just guys that like to hang out in the in the kitchen and cook. Yeah, and that's one of the things I know. And what's great is the different things that we do because I have a, you know a family of four, so I cook different you know family of four type meals. And you, I know, love and. Tom's gonna wait, wait till we get into Cajun stuff, but the spicy yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, I really love to get into, to do some experimenting with spices. Yeah. The hotter the better for me, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll try things. so we're, we're, we're really self-trained. We're, we're kind of self-trained here. You know, I'm gonna put a little uh, olive oil down in the, uh, in the pan here. Uh, robusto! I'm gonna put a little robust olive oil just in the bottom of the pan here. And for this, like I said, you just need the, uh, the turkey breast and the, the jarred garlic is the way to go. We, we start mixing that with the beer. The reason I chose the, the uh, jarred garlic is real simple. One, you don't have to, you know, mash and peel the garlic. And this can stay in for a while. You can keep that in your yeah. refrigerator. You can have it around for a while. Yeah, and half a teaspoon equals one clove of garlic. All right, so we'll get to that. I'm gonna go, in, in this you can slice as thick as you want. Um, so we'll just kind of go in. You know, I'm sure there's a professional chef so you're using the wrong knife. You know what? We use what works. And that's when you're in the kitchen. Use what works, right? Use what works for you. It, it, it cuts. That's all you need. So we're going to cut these. And you know what? Why don't you go ahead and mix go up and the start. beer and the garlic. All right. Well, I'm mixing these. Tom's going to get the, uh, Tom's going to get his measuring spoon. You just kind of slice this into chunks. Remember, the thicker it is, the, the longer it's going to take to cook. It's nice and thawed out there. All right, what was the garlic? Uh, the so garlic, you know, this is one of the things, it depends on how garlicky you like things, anywhere from five to 10 cloves. So a half a teaspoon is one clove. So why don't you go ahead and throw in, throw in some, throw in some garlic, throw in five of those. Right. Or do you like things really garlicky? No, well, let's keep it. Keep it simple. That's the great thing about the, uh, you know, this is, that's the one thing, you know, we kind of give you the basics here and then you can go ahead and make it your own. And, that's really what uh, what it's all about. Then you just place your turkey, your turkey little slices here into your pan, just like that. 
All right, All put right. five of those in there. We'll put that little guy in there too. I'll go ahead and wash this. Got five of those in there. Go ahead and uh, pour your beer, beer in there. I went with the Belgian beer. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, well, you know, you could use any type of beer. I wouldn't use anything heavy like a stout, uh, but a, a light. A light ale, Belgian beer. This one uh, has uh, orange peel. It was brewed with orange peel. It's got kind of a coriander uh, flavor to okay. it. It's got. Uh, it was brewed with some uh, oats. Oh, so, some stuff uh, that would go so really this well. Be, yeah, this will be, this will, the spices will mix really well in there. So I'm just gonna mix that up. All right. And again, our, our oven's preheated to 375. You're gonna put this in the oven for about. 55 minutes again, it's gonna vary with poultry, especially turkey, and when you cut this maybe an inch thick, you want the insides to be 160 degrees. We have a meat thermometer, it's always a great tool to have. Once he gets that all mixed up, I'll go ahead and open the, uh, the seasonings there. Fresh sprigs of uh, rosemary and thyme, and it kinda you know, gives it that little Christmas tree look, but if you got that mixed up, go ahead right. and pour, that, pour over. that right over it, yeah. All right. And, you know, and sometimes when you make this, the best thing is having more than one bottle of beer. Oh, yeah. You know, one, for, one for me and one for uh, the turkey. A little for the turkey, a little for you. And you can go ahead and uh, place your, your, your fresh spices in there. Kind of let it all bake. Oh, that smells great. Good choice on the beer, Tom. Oh, yeah. All right. You can put in as much as you want. We got uh, big rosemary in there. We'll put another one right there. Look at that. All right, Great that. holiday recipe. All right, so we'll go ahead, open the microwave for me, and we'll go ahead and we'll put this in here. We'll let this go. And again, we're going to, uh, and this is the thing, because it's convection microwave and it heats with that hot air, do not cover this. All right, just set it right there on the rack. Just like that, we'll go ahead and put that in. We'll press start. All right, and we are good, all right? So we've got the uh, turkey going in the oven now, so I guess for the potatoes. Right? Yeah, these are gonna be really, really good, all right? You got some brown butter. I'll show you how to brown the butter, which is really neat. It gives it a, a really unique taste, and it's really not hard to do. It's got Parmesan cheese, and it's mashed potatoes, so how hard is it, right? Yeah. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm guessing, knowing you, it's more cheese, the better. Yeah, it's more cheese and more butter. That's that's how it is. Now, one of the things that we are doing is, and we kind of, uh, pre-peeled some of these to save time, but we got one more that needs to be peeled. When we choose potatoes, we like the big boys. Big taters. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these if you wanna peel that last one. Gotcha. So we're gonna head and get these potatoes going here. We're gonna chop them up uh, so we can get them boiling. And this is gonna be a fantastic, fantastic meal. And it's great, because it's really easy to do. All right, Tom, get some water. And we will smash potatoes, right? These, that's what's great. They're just so easy to make. Scoop them all in. You can throw a couple on the floor. And if you have time, he makes a little game out of it. When yeah. you knock him off the cutting board, he sees how many he can catch. And then the next time, he sees if he can beat that record. It's not a very exciting game. All right. On to the induction cooktop. What's great about the induction cooktops, you can choose either your temperature, you know, if you want a specific temperature, or you can go on level one, two, three, four, five, and, and, and so on. So that's, we're just gonna uh, crank up. We're just gonna crank this on high so that water can start boiling. We'll let those water, the potatoes boil until they get all nice and soft. We're gonna go ahead and mash them. And when they get about there, that's when we're gonna start to make that browned butter. So I think while these are boiling, let's move on to Chris Mint Pie. My favorite part, dessert. Chris Mint Pie. This is actually really, really good. And this is simple. It doesn't get any simpler than this. All you need, I'm gonna grab all of our goodies here. Some chocolate. We use chocolate fudge. You can use devil's food, whatever. Chocolate pudding mix. Some peppermint instant. extract. Yeah, the instant stuff. Some peppermint bark. You can use candy canes too. If you like candy canes, this is one of the great things. You know, we're not professional chefs. We like to experiment. We encourage you to take these recipes and, and you know have a little fun with them. This you actually put in at the end, but we're gonna have Tom break it up. Gonna need some milk for the pudding. Here we are. And just like that. So here's what we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna mix up our pudding mix here. You might wanna go ahead and beat that bark for later. Yes, I will. Yeah, just go ahead and crush that up because what you do is you sprinkle that on at the end. Now, you know, if you're wondering about, oh, I love these recipes, how to get it? Well, at the very, very end of this segment, all the recipes are laid out. All the ingredients, the cook times, uh, 
so you'll be good to go just at the end of this video. Go ahead and wash those. We got two bags of this. You can use one big box or two small boxes. It depends on how how thick you like the paint. Uh, Aww. I should have been paying fire. attention. That's all right. Look at that. It was just like that. And <laughs> really I got something on the box here. You know what? That happens. That's <laughs> that's one of the great things. So what the you know, if you read the I'm making a big mess. That's the best part. All right, so it says for the, uh, you use one and three quarters cups of milk, so we use two boxes, so that's three and a half if you want to do the, uh, do the fast math there. So you put in three and a half cups of milk. Nice. And, you know, you could use a, a pounder on this. I'm going to take out my aggression. Oh, yeah. Pound it, Tommy. Half. Pound yeah. it. And then we'll save that for later. We're also going to need, you know, the recipe... For one of the, you can. I like to use two containers. The small one, one as we mix this to put in, and then one at the end to top with. So you crush that up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, slowly mix this. Probably good. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then we're going to spoon in one of these babies. We also need uh, nice. to add some peppermint extra extract out there. So uh, why don't you grab the measuring spoons? We think they're the third door down. We need one teaspoon of peppermint extract. Flavor. I think we could have made two pies. It's all right. Mm -hmm. We will. We will eat it. And if you have extra, it fills it up too much. You know, spoon it into a little container and then refrigerate it. And sometimes you have to eat this. I love this peppermint good part. Stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Really good all part. right, that goes right on. Yeah. Um, yep. One teaspoon, right in there. Boom. Done. All right, mix this up. Yeah, it's amazing. It doesn't take very much of that. Mint. Not at all. It's like fill the room. Just like that. I like to use a chocolate pie crust because I have a chocolate thing. So I love the chocolate pie crust. One of those things. Here, I'll hold that. All right. Chocolate pie crust. I think we made a lot of filling here. So we'll go ahead and spoon this in. Yeah. It's all right. Not oh, nice. Probably like that. And the rest of it, you can go ahead. Like I said, if you have an extra, just spoon it and put a little cups and put it in the fridge, and you'll have like a little nice little dessert for later. All right, this is going to take about a half hour to set up, and then we'll come back, and then you put the whipped cream on top, and then you sprinkle the bark on top. And you can use candy canes or whatever. I just like the I just like the peppermint bark. So I'm going to set this in the fridge. About a half hour, and the nice thing is, this whole meal will time out about exactly. Yeah, about an hour. Yeah, by the time you get uh, your turkey in there, by the time the potatoes are done boiling and mashed, and then you go ahead and brown the butter. So now all I have to do is just wait for potatoes to boil, mash them, the turkey to get done, and the pie to set up, and we'll be there before you know it. Go fast enough, I'm hungry. All right, so well, our Turkey is getting ready to finish up and the potatoes are about ready to mash. We're gonna go ahead and brown our butter. I like lots of butter. Butter is the secret to all good foods, right? So I like to use two sticks and this is really uh, not hard to do. Uh, it's just, you gotta be really careful with it because it goes from brown to burnt in like no time at yeah, all. real quick. So uh, take your two sticks of butter and the great thing again about the induction cooktop is you can choose either a temperature or a heat. Now the melting point of butter is 95 degrees and the smoke point is 300. So you really have, you know, you don't have to crank it to 300. We'll probably just set this to, uh, I don't know, something like five. Get this and it melts much easier if you go ahead and you cut it into oh, yeah, little slices into like slices. this. Yeah. And then after it melts, we'll go ahead and we'll chuck in the garlic. And again, this is one of those things, depending on how garlicky, garlicky you want your mashed potatoes, 
You know, three to four cloves of garlic, but again, we like the gar uh, jarred garlic simply because it's easier to travel with, it's easier to transport. Spread those out, we'll go ahead and we will uh, put those on our induction cooktop and let's go with uh, heat on those. And go ahead and five's good, we'll let that melt. Should melt pretty quick. And then when that starts to melt, and again, depending on how high you have it, you see the butter's already starting to melt. And this can take just a few minutes or a little bit longer depending on, on your heat. But again, you don't want to go too hot because you don't want it to scorch. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and we'll let those melt. And then when those melt, we'll toss in the, uh, toss in the garlic. And then uh, get the process going here. But it you smells gotta, great. Yeah, you got to stir it. It's a constant stir. You got to constantly stir it so you don't burn it. So we'll let it melt. And then it's going to kind of start to foam up and boil. Uh, after this is all melted, we'll add in the garlic. And again, the, the ratio on this, if you use this jar of garlic, it's a half teaspoon is equivalent to one clove. So we're looking at three to four cloves of garlic. I like things really garlicky, but when you throw the Parmesan cheese in there as well, and that you blend in, and we'll show you how you do it after we uh, start to uh, blend the potatoes. All right, so our butter is melted. Tom, go ahead and dump in some garlic. So again, half teaspoon is a whole clove. So depends on how garlicky you like your potatoes. You can go with three cloves, that's fine. So there's one, and then two, four, three. Now the butter will start to foam up and then it will start to turn almost like a golden honey brown. And that's really just kind of the, uh, like the, the Pieces of milk that go in the butter are kind of sure. are browning up, and stirring is important. Just the, the smell of that of yeah. those two going together, awesome! It's great. It'll be great in the potatoes. Kind of let that foam up a little bit, and when it starts to get to that golden point, what will happen is, is it will it'll almost quiet down. The okay. bubbling will stop, and it will kind of go quiet, and then you'll know right there and then what we're gonna have to do because we just still have to finish up the potatoes you're gonna want to refrigerate this so we'll take it when it's done here and then we will refrigerate it until we're ready to go I'll hear it getting there now it's starting to boil up still got that nice golden yellow flavor yellow color yellow is not a flavor but it can be <laughs> And then hear how it's quietened down? Yeah. Stop sizzling. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. And just a nice golden brown color. It's really gonna make those potatoes pop, if you will, with that garlic infused in there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and set this in the fridge right now because you wanna remove it from the heat. Grab that fridge for me. All right, I think our potatoes are done, so we're going to go ahead and strain those. Awesome. Got our colander set out here. Let me grab a uh, oven mitt here so just I don't burn warm. myself. We are just about done on that turkey as well, so timing is perfect. Let's uh, go ahead and set these in our mixer here. Right, well, let me just bring these over to you. All right. There we go. There we go. Go ahead, we'll lock this into place. Add a little salt. How about I do it the right way? <laughs> and we're gonna add, this recipe is a bag of cheese because I love my cheese. About half the bag of cheese will go in here and then you kind of sprinkle the rest on top. That locked and go ahead and we'll start to mix those. All right, go ahead and uh, chuck in half that bag of cheese. How are we doing on the creaminess? Let's add just a touch more melt. That's good. Perfect. 
And you know, I'm going to put that uh, garlic butter in there. Get that going. Very nice. Slip this up here. Oh, look how creamy those are. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice and healthy. Look at that, yes. Well, no one said this was a healthy cooking cooking web show web series. Alright, just set that away. Let's get that all blended in. Oh the cheese is melting and getting gooey. Oh yeah. Got some stuck on the side there. Let that up. I'm gonna get it all blended in. Oh this is gonna oh, look great today. Yeah, it's gonna be really good. good. Then we have to top it with more cheese. How's that doing? About two and a half minutes left on that turkey. Oh, that'll be perfect. On the inside, boy, it looks really good. It that'll looks like perfect. we're going to be good to go. All right, so we are just giving a good mix. Some more salt. And then we'll sprinkle a little parsley on top with the cheese, but I think we have that looks potatoes. Awesome. Yeah. You can see this cheese just all stringy in there. I want to ask if you want to lick the beater. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's good. Oh, these are ready to plate. And our turkey is one minute and 40 seconds to go. We got the th Let me grab this meat thermometer. Grab that. Tell you what. Oh, you know what? We could finish our pie. Oh, well, that's true. That's that. That'll be done in one minute. This won't take long. To, for the turkey, potatoes. So this is really easy. So that's set up nice and oh, firm. Very nice. Then all you do is you spoon. You get to plop it down there too. Right on. Spoon it down there. Get me a big spoon if you would please, sir. Perfect mundo. No. Right, just like that. Well, here's our bark. Is that oh, that's in the fridge. Yeah, nice and thick. And we'll make a pretty little design in there. All right, sprinkle nice. away. Very sprinkle nice. away. And again, you can use candy cane. This just works really, really good. You can sprinkle that on there. Yeah, look at that. You're missing a section. You're missing yeah. a section. Even dispersal of the peppermint. Oh, look at oh, that. Look at that. We are about ready to feast, my friend. We shall feast like kings today. <laughs> All right. And really, that's the great thing is these are suey. You can see we made these in our Aria kitchen. Again, these are really easy to make. We'll give you the complete Aria rating, the official Aria rating here in a second. And, you know, you can sprinkle as much of this on as you like. Yeah, you can decorate that a little better yeah. than maybe I did, but uh, like it that. will taste awesome, I'm sure. Let's move this out of the way. Move this over here. Well, we'll clean up in a minute. You want to get... Uh, Let's get this out. Pull this baby out of here. I'm super excited right. about this. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks like we're going to be done. Oven here. is hot, by the way. All right. Very and nice. We're going to get our plates out. But yeah, with sure. the uh, meat thermometer, I guess. Oh, here it is. Oh, pulled it out. I grabbed it out. Grab some plates. All right, and you know what? We are going to need some salt and pepper on this. Pepper. And in the potatoes, let's just go ahead and put. Uh, oh, yeah, there we're oh, up to that. temperature. We'll put a couple of sprinkles of parsley. We will top with the rest of the cheese. We got a lot of cleanup, don't we? No, we sure do. Part. After we eat. After we, of course. Oh, there you go. You can't beat that, <laughs> right? Mix that in. We'll go ahead and, yeah, just kind of fold that in a little bit. Oh, yeah, we are at 165 degrees. Turkey is done. And there you are. It is just that easy. So, again, to go over what we made today, this is our beer-roasted turkey breast. 
our garlic butter parmesan potatoes and our Christmas mint pie, or our Christmas mint pie. So if we were to rank these on our ARIA scale from one to five, one being the simplest, five being the most challenging, this would probably be what? Two, uh, two, two ARIAs? Two, two or three, two. somewhere in there. It was, oh. it was barely simple. How about we go two and a half? Okay. Two and a half ARIAs on the beer roasted turkey, the potatoes. Let's Nine, go five, three. three yeah. Let's go three ARIAs on the potatoes. And Definitely a one. On a the one way. on the Christmas pie. So there you go. This is Mobile Meals from Thor Motor Coach. This is going to be so good. Now, all the recipes are going to be at the end of the video, all the ingredients, the cook times. Again, the cook times are going to vary depending on what we're using. We're using the uh, Whirlpool convection microwave, our induction cooktop. If you have a gas oven, again, you can adjust the temperature and you're going to have to check with that meat thermometer. With mobile Meals, it's just that easy and it's just that delicious. It is, and I cannot wait try this. Thing. All right, so we are going to dig in. Enjoy your time in the kitchen. Cook like a champ and we'll see you on the next webisode of Mobile Meals.